Good to see each one of y'all this morning, and I pray you'll be touched, because I do believe in these last days, God's going to pour out His blessings upon those who are faithful to Him, and I believe it. I believe it with the model of my heart. The message this morning is entitled, The Mystery is Our Hope. Being a born-again believer, we have so many so many blessings. As Christians, our hope is in Christ. We as believers have a desire to be with Christ. Mm -hmm. Along with this desire, we expect to spend eternity with Him. This morning, let us look at this hope that we have as believers. And this is very important. And I believe it's very important for us as believers. In spite of a lot of things, I do not believe this world is going to get any better. I believe it's waxing worse and worse. <coughs> the only way I believe things are going to get better is when Jesus returns. There's a lot of heartache, a lot of hardship. But one thing that we have as believers is that Christ says he'll never leave nor forsake us. And that's very important. Amen. The mystery is our hope. First we see it as a trust. Psalms 125, chapter 125 of Psalms verses 1 and 2 says, that they trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide it forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. That's an important verse of scripture. Two verses very important for us as believers. Being a believer is not just coming to church on a Sunday morning or whenever certain churches have worship services. But being a believer is trusting in God's Word. But I need to ask you a question, and this is a very, question, a very important question as we enter into the end of the church age. How many people know what it means to trust Jesus Christ? I have been blessed over the many years. But let me share with you how I've been blessed. It will go contrary to many believers' thoughts. In fact, they might even get a little irritated with me. I've been blessed because I've had very little. And by having very little, pastoring a church, raising four kids, working all night, pastoring all day, I knew what it was to try to minister without anything. Therefore, I had to put my trust in Jesus. I never wavered. When God told me to do something, I did it. Amen. In fact, the fact, I only pastored two churches. The one down south in that neighborhood, you'd have to understand what I mean. It's not like West Monroe. All Monroe. They only had a few churches. Here you got a church everywhere. But what God said, I did it by faith. I learned to trust Him by having very little. By having very little, I saw what Christ would, could do. I saw what Christ could do. But one thing I want you to know, with this very little, I still tithe on it. Make no mistake about it. I believe God's Word and I'm a tither. But we need to trust. We need to know what the word trust means. Trust is believing what is said to be true. The Bible, the Word of God, that is true. That is the truth. We need to trust into the Word of God. But how can we trust the Word of God if we don't know the Word of God? It's very important to know the Word of God. Very important. Very, very important. When you trust someone, you believe this one. 
And by doing this, you're having no doubts about that one. Having no second thoughts. How many here has ever said something, made a decision and had second thoughts about it? Maybe I shouldn't have did it. Me and my wife is faced with some two serious things this coming year, as this year ends. Our gap insurance that pays the 20% that Medicare doesn't pay is costing us close to $800 a month. It's taking everything we have. So we have to make a choice. And that's the way it is. And I'm praying for God to make that choice for us. I'm still a tithe of them. I still tithe. Because I believe in it. If I got to steal from God to pay a bill, I'm not doing things right. I'm not fully trusting in God. Y'all with me this morning? Mm -hmm. Amen. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Having no second thoughts. Not to be swayed by what others say or have said or will say. I remember I got a letter, several letters when I passed it down south. Whoever was writing the letter, and I'm not going to say the denomination, says we don't we don't use spiritual gifts. I said, well, maybe y'all don't, but we do. Because we need spiritual gifts. We need the gift of healing. We need the gift of deliverance. We need the gift. We need the gift of discernment. We need the spiritual gift. God gave them to us, has given them to us for a reason and a purpose. Whatever that person was saying of some organization, denomination, what it was, he's not going to tell me what God's Word tells me. He's not going to tell me to go against God's Word. I believe and I still believe in everything I said. God said it, I believe it. It needs to be used. God will love it. It needs to be used according to the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Y'all with me on that? That's very important. A lot of people use spiritual gifts to browbeat people. Run them off. Well, I believe the Holy Spirit can do pretty good by Himself. He don't need me. Amen. Amen. I think He can share what needs to be shared if we give Him a chance. Not to be swayed by what others say or have said or will say. God is true. And God cannot lie. Or will God ever lie? Mm -hmm. If I believe God can lie, then I doubt my salvation, and I don't doubt my salvation. God had brought me through so much. God had brought Inez through so much. God had brought this church through so much. Maybe God is bringing you through so much. Don't give up. Amen. Now we don't have we don't have landlines anymore. At least I don't. I don't have a landline, but way back, if you're talking to somebody and you didn't feel like talking, we can do the same thing with a handheld phone. But you can just take that phone and click. And if you're real mad, if you this is a landline phone now, you know what I mean? You know, the final Amen. When you get really mad at somebody, damn! The ears will open up. Well, you can't do that with a cell phone. All you can do is press the button and press it. Amen. Y'all ever did that? Or was it just me? <laughs> that was before I was saying. <laughs> Praise God, he took those phones away so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Praise God. Amen. We can trust God. We can trust Christ Jesus because He has never let us down. And He won't let you down now. Whatever you're going through, put your faith and trust and say, okay, Lord, I don't understand it, but you still created me. Something good's going to come. Believing that Christ is in you, that the Holy Spirit is right here. Amen. And I do believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three in one. Hallelujah. By believing this, one allows my belief to become an actual fact, fact, and your belief in Christ Jesus. Let me share something with you. Be careful. They got cults out there that want to suck you in. Mormons is a cult. Make no mistake about it. 
I don't care how smart they might look. I don't care what they don't drink. I don't really care, but they make money off of that stuff by people who does. I want you to know that. But Mormons is a cult. Amen? And this is what they believe. They say, you send in and we'll send you a Bible. They'll send you the King James Bible. But they said, but they say, the Book of Mormons overflies the book. Come on, y'all got me? That tells me I need to get out of there real quick. Hallelujah. Praise God. Christ can do all things. Y'all believe that Christ, through Christ we can do all things? If we give Him a chance. We just got to say, God, I don't understand. I don't understand it. But God, like you said, you'll never leave Him. You said you'll always be with Him. I don't understand it. I don't understand how when, I, when, when the, the, the breath of life leaves me that my spirit's going to be with Him. I don't understand it, but it's the truth. And I believe it. I believe it. Remember, Jesus loves you. And Jesus cares for you. First, we see it as trust. Second, we see it with great expectations. Great expectations. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting it right here. I'm expecting great things. And these great things, it's for the kingdom of God. It's for the kingdom of God. We can have people everywhere. And we might have a bunch of people saved. Well, they might say, well, you know, I want to go to another church. Then go. If Jesus Christ is centered, then go. We're going to pray blessings on you. But we want to add to the kingdom. We want to add to the kingdom. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 and 2. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we grow earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Which is from heaven. We see it with great expectations. It's a gesture of reaching out in readiness to receive something. And what we want to receive is the power of the Holy Ghost working in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Seeing their lives change. I've never seen the world so corrupt. I never thought I would see what's going on today. Mm -hmm. But I believe good is going to come from it because when people get tired of Satan biting them, they're going to turn to Christ Jesus in droves. What does the world have to offer? What kind of pills they call it? Those little pills? You take a lot of those little pills and you get high? Old pods or something like that? I don't know. They take drugs and all this other stuff? Well, I'll tell you what. None of that's going to satisfy. The only thing that's going to satisfy is the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing. And I'm looking out. I'm looking with great expectation. Watching with outstretched hands and outstretched hearts. Expecting by faith, believing without seeing. I like Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. My hope is in Jesus Christ. I don't understand it, but it is. Believing on God's word. All that the Word of God reveals. Believing all the promises that God gives. Expecting good things to take place. Do you know God can take a bad thing and turn it into a good thing if we live? Amen. Hallelujah. How long does it take? How long does it take to, to build a house? Ever how long it takes? That's just the way it is. But expecting good things to take place. Praising God for allowing you to work for Him. It's a pleasure to work for God. He's allowing us to work for Him. Amen? You can't outwork God. You can't outgive God. You can't do it. Prove it. Okay, let's go back to the Old Testament. 
the Hebrew children in the land of Goshen and Egypt were slaves for over 400 years. They were slaves for over 400 years. When God said it was time to go, the Egyptians loaded up gold and silver and all bossy wood, all that stuff. They loaded it up to where the, the wagons were full of it and as they, as they were leaving, valuables were, were loaded on that wagons, wagons. God paid the Hebrew children for 400 years of labor. God paid them. God does not expect anyone to do anything for nothing. But we have to do it with an open heart, not expecting, but rather believing that God is going to take care of us. Are we on the right track there? This is very important now. Very, very important. Third, we have confidence. We have confidence in God. To have confidence in Christ as our foundation. My faith is built on nothing other than the foundation of Christ Jesus. Through the years, that faith has grown stronger and stronger and stronger because of what God has done. What I've seen God do. Me and Vicky, me and Vicky was at, Peter's not here, but he generally allows me to, and, and Brother Mickey there, to have prayer for the bus drivers or whatever. And we was at, uh, at, at a meeting not too long ago, right across the street from the school board uh, in Monroe. They built a beautiful building on West Monroe, the school board. But anyway, as we were leaving, a lady, I didn't know the lady, Mickey did, I didn't know the lady, she come running, she come running, she got a blind daughter born, born in birth blind. But, but she was, she said, I need prayer, I need prayer. I just, just found out I got a, a lump on my breast, I need prayer. And, and, and we did, we prayed for her right there. And I didn't know she, she was in the office of Skeeters. And I was asking Mickey about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I had lunch with her Saturday, with Friday, with, with Skeeter and the other people of the office. And she said she don't have it. Yeah. I want to try to get her to come here and share the testimony. You see, we have confidence in God. Yeah. We have confidence. You might not be healed yet, but don't give up, baby. Your healing is all the way. Uh, you might not be delivered yet, but don't give up. Don't give up. Your deliverance is on the way. Praise God. Don't give up. But we have confidence in Christ. Everything one believes is based on the foundation of Christ. It's based on the foundation of Christ. When we are set, when God sets us Stand us up upon the foundation that gives us the quality of confidence to endure whatever situation we might find ourselves in. Don't give up because God is working. God is working in us. God is working in this church. God is working in this community behind the scenes. God is working. But how do you, let me ask you a question. We've got time. Let me ask you a question. I, 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 I was on the phone. My dad was on the phone. He plowed with a, with a horse. Metal horse is what they call it. How do you harvest a crop? What's the first thing you got to do before you can harvest a crop? You got to plow the field. You got to plant it. You got to hold it. You gotta harvest it. Don't give up is what I'm saying. Don't give up. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Fourth. Then we will have comfort. What did I say? First, the mystery is our hope. First, we see it as trust. We see it with great expectations. We have confidence in it. Third, we have comfort. Then we have comfort. We need comfort. Knowing all will come to pass in this life. Comfort. That will keep us going on. All will come, come to pass in this life as well in the life to come. 
and that's eternity. God says that I believe it. You know, I don't care if I walk on streets of gold or not. It don't make me no difference. Amen? When God says I'm going to walk on streets of gold, I'm going to walk on streets of gold. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have comfort. Allow, this allows one to live victorious on this earth. I put the enemy on the alert right now. Don't you think it's time to put the enemy on the alert? Enemy, be careful, because my father's coming after you. Woo! You better get out of here, baby. Woo! My father is coming after you. Praise God. Don't you worry about it. He's got a bunch of angels going to tear you up. You better get out of here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Comfort, comfort, comfort. How many here need comfort? I need comfort. We all need comfort. We need to live victorious on this earth. This comfort allows each one of us as believers to face head on what is coming our way. My brother back there, I think it was two years ago, drives an 18 wheeler, had a head on collision in Mississippi, I believe. I'm not for sure about that. But anyway, no one was hurt. We can face head on. Whatever Satan has given to us or trying to give us by the power of the Holy Spirit that is within us when we follow what the Word of God tells us to follow. But we've got to follow the Word of God. Amen. We can't allocate just We can't do that. Something we can't allocate. We've got to face whatever is coming on to us head on by the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us because we're going to have victory. Amen. Praise God. Well, the hope that each one of us have is in Christ Jesus. And that Christ Jesus is what is in us. So let's pray. Christ is the only way. Can I have an amen? Now I'm going to ask the question. Do you have Christ Jesus? Somebody says, well, you got a small congregation. Yeah, sure do. we got some good people, don't we? Amen. We just need to make sure we have Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to have just a few minutes of invitation.